Hello calculus students, welcome to our first walkthrough on the test prep questions. So the way these are going to work this year is that every time you get stuck on a problem, especially if you're at home, this would be available to you, these little videos, to, uh, to go get some help on. So, But my expectation would be that all students are always trying to do these problems on their own first. You don't want to just come sit here and w go through it with me for your first time. That doesn't really help you learn it very well. You need to kind of struggle through these things, have that, uh, that moment of kind of an aha moment where you, some of them you'll figure out on your own. Uh, but if you're really stuck on something, then yes, come and watch this. Uh, it might save yourself some time to get ready instead of waiting to to ask the question in class. Okay, so the graph of the function f is shown. Which of the fall? Oh, and by the way, you should just fast forward to the one you need help with, obviously. You don't need to watch this whole thing. Just skip to the ones you're struggling with. Graph of the function f is shown. Which of the following statements about f is true? So if you go through each one of these, which is what we could do, you could just kind of go through each one of them and figure out which one's true, um, which I'm going to, I'll probably just go each one and explain why it's false or not false. So the limit as x approaches a has to equal the limit as x approaches b. So the two limits would equal each other. So here, let's approach a. The limit here is definitely going to be a 4 on this one. Uh, the limit here at b, though, that limit does not exist. It's undefined. Um, I'm just going to put d and e. does not exist for, for the limit approaching b. So these definitely don't equal each other. So not that one. The limit approaches b equals 4. Nope, we already figured out that those do not exist because the left side and the right side are different. So not that one. The limit as x approaches a does not exist. No, because we already showed here that it's going to approach the y value of 4 from both sides. And then here, that's it because the limit as x approaches a is equal to 4. And then this one, the reason it's not 1 is because the right side approaches the number 1 here, but the left side's going somewhere else, so it doesn't exist. Number two, we have here uh, these one, two, three. We're going to see a lot of these this year where we try and figure out which of the statements are true or which of the statements are false, which is an important thing to watch out for. This is asking which ones are true. So we want to check off the ones that are true. The left side of two exists. So let's go over here. Here's two. We're looking at the left side of two. So somewhere on this side, here's the graph. And it is approaching right there. Now, some students are going to say, oh, that doesn't exist because it's an open circle. But a limit, oops, fix that back. But a limit is not about what's going on at the point. Remember that? A limit is just where it's headed. And yes, the limit exists because the limit is approaching a, a point. Again, it doesn't matter if it's filled in or not. The limit exists. The right side, we're approaching a point here. The limit exists. And then do both sides exist? So when you don't see a little plus or minus, are they going to the same place? No, they're not. That's the one that does not exist. So it's just one and two. Number three, probably the one that has the most questions on this packet, so I'll try to clearly explain this. The first thing you need to understand is what a greatest integer does. A greatest integer, if we plug in a number, let's say 2.7 to a greatest integer function, what that spits out is the integer that is just smaller than this. And what I mean by that is it's the greatest integer that is less than or equal to. So 2.7 would become a 2 because 2 is the integer that it's largest that's just smaller than 2.7. Okay, so if I plug in a 1.1, then that gives me a 1. Okay, pretty, pretty easy stuff. Now it does get a little trickier when you move into the negative numbers. Now think about this. If I do a negative 5.4, what does that give me? What number is just smaller than negative 5.4? What integer is just smaller than negative 5.4? Some people are incorrectly going to say negative 5. Negative 5 is not smaller than negative 5.4, so we don't want to do that. The answer to this would be negative 6, because negative 6 is smaller than negative 5.4. And then if I had a negative 0.6, what's the answer to that? That would spit out a negative 1. Okay, so now that's what the greatest integer function does. If you don't know that, there's really no way you're going to be able to answer this. Well, okay, you can guess, but you're not going to understand this without knowing what the greatest integer does. So the next thing is is to figure out what is the limit of this as zero, as x is approaching zero from the left side. So what that means is we're going to plug in a 2 divided by 
negative 0 0.00000, a number that's really, really close to 0. So I'm going to do, try something like that. What does that give me? It's going to give me 2 divided by, what is the greatest integer of this? You haven't reached 0 yet, so it's going to spit out negative 1. Until you get to 0, once you get to 0, then it's going to spit out a 0. But until you get there, it's going to always give the integer that's just smaller. And because we're approaching 0, we don't actually ever get to 0, so it will always be a negative 1. Okay, so that is how we get the answer, which was, yeah, A. Okay, last one here. We're trying to figure out which of the following statements are true. We want true, so we want it to work. The limit as x approaches 1 equals 3. Let's see. So we go to the limit as x approaches 1. The limit as x approaches 1 is right here. It's the y value of, because it's where both graphs are headed. They're headed to that point, and that's equal to 1, so that's not true f of 1 equals 1. So here's where 1 is. What's the, where's the dot? The dot's up here at 3. So that's not true because this would be 3. So boom, we can cross that off. f of x is continuous. No, it's not. There's a hole right there, so it's not continuous. The limit equals the same as f of 1. Nope, we already showed that up here. The limit is equal to 1. And f of 1, that just means what's the y value. And the y value we already showed is equal to 3. Therefore, these are not the same. The limit's down here at 1, and the y value is up there at 3. So not that one. None of the above. Okay, that's it. Good luck on that mastery check.